Redis, which stands for Remote Dictionary Server, is a powerful and lightning fast open source in memory data structure store. In this video, we'll dive into the world of Redis to uncover how it works and we'll cover different use cases to show how it can benefit your projects. It is a top choice for developers seeking to optimize their projects with speed, efficiency and scalability. To deploy your instance, you can use Redis Cloud, self-deploy it, or we will see at the end of the video how to use our platform Elestio to deploy the open source version to the cloud provider of your choice. Redis is defined as an in-memory data structure store, but you will say my server already has a built-in memory. While you are right and you can use it if you are using one single server, let's look what we have if we have one server with the memory. We have multiple clients doing requests to our server and our server is able to answer to our client with the same memory that it has. There are no problem using the memory because the data are all from that memory. But even with that architecture, we can have some problems. Maybe the server will reboot and you will lose all your memory and then it will restart with a new memory. So it's not persistent. Or another problem that you might have is you have many more clients arriving that requires you to add more server to scale your project. But then the memory won't be the same. I draw it just below. If you scale your project, you will have multiple servers here. This time, client one will talk to server A, but maybe client two will talk to server B. Let's say that you have an email address that have to be unique and client one subscribed to server A with that email address and client two did the same thing to server B. Because they are not using the same data, the same memory, they won't know that this email is already taken and will answer wrong answers to the client. That's where you will need a database. So it can be an in-memory DB with Redis or you can use a traditional uh, database like MySQL or NoSQL database like MongoDB. The main difference is that Redis performances are way higher than MongoDB or MySQL performances. But let's see together what use cases are very good to use Redis for. Let's do some pseudocode to see together six ways to use Redis to optimize our project. It will both affect the performance but also the costs. Let's imagine that we are doing some session management on our server and we are using GWT. Maybe we will have a function check auth is an async function. And we need to check if the GWT of the user is correct. So we check, check GWT, it's valid. But now we have the user info, check if user is banned or not. Because if our GWT is 10 minutes, we don't want that during 10 minutes, our user can still perform actions. So if we do our function, check if user is banned, we could do a SQL function check if bad. But the delay, it may be few uh, dozens of milliseconds, but it could easily be 100 milliseconds. So you add it to your request for each request of your project. So at least for all requests. Instead of doing it, what you can do is when you create the GWT, so you do everything that you need and then you will do await client.set for user with a specific ID. You say, okay, those are the information of my user email and user infos. And then if you ban the user, you will just remove the key. Await client.del and you said the user key. So it's colon and you set the parameter and the tree that you require. So now instead of doing an SQL request, you will just do client.get of your user and the key. And you will go from 100 milliseconds to very few milliseconds. But the benefit is not just to gain speed here. It's also to leave your SQL database to work for other requests instead of doing a lot of read operation. Let's see the second use case, a rate limiter. What if you want to serve a page? You have your uh, function request. Maybe you will have the headers 
No, that includes uh, the IP address, maybe the user info if it's with a JWT token. You can check in DB, but you will also have the issue of many right to enter all the requests of the user. And you will also have many read to know how many times the, the request has been done from a user. So the good solution would be just to use Redis and instead of adding rows into a DB, you would use the increment command for that user to count how many requests it did. But you can also add an expire time for it. So you can say for one hour, a user can only do 100 requests. So you will increment every time a request is done. You will set the expire time to uh, one hour and automatically you can check that your user is not DDoS your server. While in SQL, you would need to check the date and add values manually at the correct date to do the same principle that you can easily do with Redis. This concept of increment, you can use it for analytics. Maybe also you will have a surf page and you have information about the user, where it comes from, how many clicks, how many views. So user infos. So instead of doing the traditional way with SQL, insert into table all infos that will easily overflow your database if you have a lot of users at the same time. What you can do is to use Redis to use increments and to aggregate data and then maybe every hour run a cron job and store it into your db it has many benefits like a real-time analytics for your user without overflowing your db but also do bigger transactions for multiple users and multiple requests at once which results in less read right into your DB. You can also use Redis as a cache system. Let's say you have a blog article page. So it needs a request to get the latest information from a blog article. Maybe you need to query the DB to get the latest info. And maybe from it, you will need to do some processing to edit the data and uh, generate the HTML page. Maybe you also have some other processes I don't have in mind. You can keep it, but once you done it, store the result into Redis. Next time it's called, what you do is you check into Redis if it exists. And you will say, okay, but maybe it's not uh, the latest info. So when you update an article, you just clear the Redis key. That way, only the first one that do the request will query the database and will do the processing, but all the other requests will come from Redis. Again, it will save your DB for from multiple read and write and faster requests for your users. So it's a lot of benefits. You can also use Redis as a queue system, for example, with a bool library to run cron job in any of your projects. Let's say you have multiple servers and you want to run a job every hour. Only Redis will help you know that it's not already running on another server you have. And as it is persistent across reboots and errors, it's the best way to work with it. If you look at not BB open source software, you can discover that Redis can also be used as a high performing database. As long as your project isn't too big yet, you can use it and have high performance out of the box. Once your projects get bigger, then you can start thinking about migrating to a more traditional form of database. Now let's see how we can use LSTO to deploy our Redis instance easily. Go to LSTO, hit login, deploy my first service, search for Redis, select, choose your cloud provider, I will choose Kaleway, choose also your service plan, and hit next. Choose your level of support, rename it if you need, and create service. I received the email telling me that my instance is ready. I click here to get the password. I copy the password into my clipboard and I go to my admin UI, username root, and I paste the password. Now we arrive on the dashboard of our Redis instance. Let's try to use our Redis. We can go into this database, which is named local, go to the CLI, 
and we can run commands directly into our Redis instance. Let's say set user. We will add colon to go deeper in the tree of our keys. Let's say, for example, a user ID 200 space and then the value. We'll say it's my email address, wasim at ls.io. And I hit enter. It says OK. Let's try to read it. Get user 200. And now I have my email address. Now, if I try another key, you just say it doesn't have it. Let's say we want to do page analytics, like we said before, we can do inc user 200 and we can go deeper and say page views. And now it starts from one because it's the first time we do it, let's do it again. And it increments automatically the value of this key. So now if we do get of this key, we have the value four. If you go back to the database overview, you can see the memory used, the number of keys, the number of clients. You have data to see how it is going for your Redis instance and if you need more or more power to handle all those requests. Most of the time you don't want to call the CLI directly from a terminal, so there are a lot of clients available from C Sharp to Node.js to Python, so you might find the one that suits you. And the use of Redis is pretty straightforward. For example, set is the same way we use it in the direct CLI. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this overview of Redis. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you are an open source lover. If you want to discover more tools to make your life easier, watch this video here.